Hi. This video is primarily to demonstrate the features and use of the Quick PLC Analog Gain and Offset Calculator. This is a tool I've developed to simplify calculations and visualize the results. On the way, we'll cover recap of the analog amplifier, why it's useful, the analog amplifier configuration dialog, parameter limits, decimal places settings, and limitations of the analog amplifier and possible problems due to its integer mathematics. The logo analog inputs convert 0 to 10 volt inputs to a digital value between 0 and 1000. While you can work with the raw digital value, it's usually desirable to convert to engineering units such as weight, distance, velocity, pressure, temperature, voltage, etc. To do this, we need to scale the input and possibly add an offset. The logo's analog amplifier is the usual way to do this and while it's quite powerful, it has a few surprises that may cause significant errors in the conversion. The most basic analog amplifier configuration is usually programmed something like this, 0 to 10 volt input, an analog amplifier, and a termination of some sort. If we examine the parameters, we can see that it can be configured for 0 to 10 volt, as well as options relevant to the range of expansion modules. We'll stick with 0 to 10 volt, as that is what is available on the 12 and 24 volt basic units. We then have to specify two of these four parameters, either the measurement range or the gain and offset. Logosoft will calculate the other two. If we hover over the input fields, we can see that the measurement range is constrained between minus 20,000 and plus 20,000. The gain is limited between minus 10.00 and plus 10.00, and the offset between minus 10,000 and plus 10,000. It may help to note that the maximum number returned by these limits will be the max input, 1,000, times 10, plus 10,000 offset, which is 20,000, and the minimum will be 1,000 times minus 10.00, minus 10,000, which is minus 20,000. This fits with room to spare inside the range of a 16-bit signed integer. There'll be a link to the logo gained at offset calculator webpage in the description below this video. The main features are a chart showing the relationship between the input on the x-axis and the output on the y-axis. We can go small, medium, or large to examine the detail or to suit your screen resolution. There are some preset examples, which I'll be adding to, which give you load up some preset values uh, to display on the graph. There's the data input area over here. And there's the results area here showing the ideal settings for the gain and the offset and what you can practically put into the logo, given the restrictions on the number values. In this example, we're setting up a 0 to 10 volt meter to measure and display the voltage from an external voltage source. To aid us in our design, we'll type in volts here. Just displays it on the screen as a reminder, but does nothing for the logo itself. At 0, Input, we want to display 0 volts. At 1000 input, we want to display 10. So the logical thing to do there would seem to be change that to 10. But we can see a couple of problems. On the chart, we can immediately see that from 0 to half a volt, it displays 0. From half a volt to 1 volt, it displays 1. From 1.5 volts to 2.5 volts, it displays 2, etc. And that is all determined just by the gain setting here of 0 0.01. Once we multiply a reading such as 500 by 0 0.01, we'll get a reading of 5 with no further decimal places. So we can improve that, as suggested in the tips here, by increasing the gain. So if we add another 0 there and say that 1000 counts on the input gives us 100 volts, well, that's obviously wrong, but if we increase the decimal places by 1, the display on the logo will be 10 volts, which is what we want. 
So looking at the chart, we can say that the zigzag or the step size has decreased significantly. Looking down here, we've gone from an error of half a volt maximum to 0 0.05 volts maximum or half a percent. But the tip is telling us we could go one more step on this and multiply by a factor of 10 again and increase the decimal places by one. And we now have a zero error on the input and everything is as we want. In this example, we've got a signal coming back from a variable frequency drive and the zero to 10 volt range indicates a current of zero to 33 amps. So again, we'll just start off with a 33 here. We'll put in amps just as a reminder. And we can see that we have a problem on the chart. We can see a largest step size. The displayed resolution is only steps of one amps. And the maximum error reported down here is 10.4% of the span. So at this point, I'll just demonstrate one other feature built into the calculator, and that is to manually increase the gain by 0 0.01 in the hopes that it might bring you up closer to the ideal line, uh, the blue one in this case. Click the checkbox, and we can see that it is overcompensated. That's no good. Another option we could look at is say, if for some reason that was the best we could do, or we didn't want decimal places for some reason, we could change the offset. And here you can see we're doing a compromise uh, between error at the bottom of the scale and error at the top of the scale. Now, depending on the application, this might be acceptable, where you just say, uh, we don't run at this level here very, very often, but we need an accurate reading when we get close to the limit. However, in this case, there's no need for that. We can add an extra digit here. Make that three, sorry, that should be three, 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 zero. And increase the decimal places by one. And now we've got 33.0 amps with the displayed value step of 0 0.01 amps and a maximum error of 0.2%. The tip is telling us that we can go and improve it again. So we'll go 3300 and increase to two decimal places. And now our conversion error is 0 0.01 amps and we've got very close results down at the bottom here. These are the settings you will apply in the logo. In this example, we're revisiting our steering potentiometer and we have found by experiment using a multimeter that when the steering is at minus 30 degrees, we get a reading of one volt or 100 counts. And when the steering is at plus 30 degrees, we get a reading of eight volts or 800 counts. So we can put those into the gain and offset calculator. Start with point one, which we said was 100 counts, one volt at minus 30 degrees and we got 800 counts at 30 degrees we'll put in the degrees symbol here on the pc you can get it with alt 0176 or you can just copy and paste it from here and we find that we have some error that the, at minus 30 degrees physical, we're going to display minus 31. And at plus 30 degrees, we're going to display 25. We've got a one degree resolution and it's clear from the graph that we're quite a bit off. Maximum error is 9% of the span. 
So again, we could try and fix this with, by tweaking the gain and offset. So increasing the gain by 0 0.01 decreases the error from 9% to 5.7%. And we could add a negative offset in here just to bring it back down into line. And we're within 4% there. But again, there's no need for that. We can reset everything back to zero and just add an extra decimal place in here. So 300 to 300, increase decimal places by one. And we're doing better. We've got 30, minus 30.1 degrees and 29.4, an error of 1.1%. But the tip is telling us we can go again on the scaling and go 3000 to and we've got a maximum process deviation of a quarter of a degree. Notice in this case the gain at offset calculator has shown us the extrapolated values if we were to run to the very end there that we would get a reading of 4714, so that would be 47 degrees. And if we were on to this end, we get a reading of minus 3857, so that would be minus 38.5 degrees. In this example, we return to our storage tank and we're using a laser or an ultrasonic sensor measuring the liquid level from the top of the tank. That means that the voltage will decrease as the tank fills up. And the animation is showing us that with tank empty, we have a reading of 7.5 volts. And with the tank full, we have a reading of 1.5 volts. So our transfer function is going to have a negative slope. The logo can handle this. So looking at our chart, we start with point 0.1 and we'll get a reading of 7.5 volts when the tank is empty and we'll get a reading of 150 or 1 1.5 volts when the tank is full which is 750 liters now as it turns out this works out quite well for us we've got adequate resolution on that we'll put in our liters here just to help us and we can see that our displayed value resolution or step height is one liter. And for a 750 liter tank, that's probably okay. There's a small error there. We can try to correct that with the offset, but we find that it goes to plus one instead of minus one. So that's probably as good as we're going to get and will be acceptable. The tip is telling us we can improve it by a factor of 10 again. So we'll just add zero onto the 750 and remember to divide by 10 and we can see now that we've got an accurate 0, 0.0 liter there so that's the optimal transfer function note again the negative slope and it's not a problem for the logo so at the end of all that you should be comfortable with the concept of the analog amplifier, the configuration dialog, the parameter limits, the decimal places settings, the web application from Quick PLC, and the limitations of the integer maths on the logo. Please let me know in the comments if you find this useful or if anything is unclear or could be improved. Hit the like button and subscribe if you want to be notified of future videos. Thank you for watching. Bye.